also know there's a lot of people flying up from Holland, you know, to support me and uh, I believe that I can, I can, I believe I can change people's mind, you know, and, and the most important thing is to make an exciting fight and it doesn't matter for who they're rooting, you know, as long as everybody walks out Saturday out of this Barclays Center and, and thinks that was a hell of a night and we saw some amazing fights. I mean, everybody knows that this card has been doubted and, and people have complained, you know, it, it's not been a secret. You know, but I promise you, they, they were doubting, what was it, 207 or 206, the, the one in Canada? You know, people were talking, oh, Anthony Pettis versus Max Holloway. I mean, I think fight of the year is on that card. I mean, Cup Swanson, I mean, not only that, I mean, the main event was an amazing fight. You know, do not underestimate. I mean, if you don't, if you don't tune in, you're going to miss out. It's not, you know, it's not up to me to convince you. I know you're going to miss out. You know, so a lot of people can can have an opinion and everybody is entitled to have their opinion. But if you're not watching, you're going to miss out. That's one thing, that's for sure. Are you insulted when you hear that, Jermaine, when people say, oh, this card isn't as good as the one in um, Madison Square Garden a few months ago. It's not worth the pay-per-view. How do you react to that? Because you're one half of the headlining act. Uh, I don't mind. You know, if, if that's what people want to say, everybody's entitled to have their opinions. And I mean... You know, if you don't want to look, like I just said, you, you don't have to look. You know, if you don't want to, you don't want to buy the pay-per-view. Nobody tells you, but it's your loss, not mine. Because I know for sure, it's gonna be one hell of a night, and it's gonna be. You know, there are amazing fights on this fight card. I mean, a legend in Anderson Silva. You know, I mean, a former world champion in Holly Holm. You know, a UFC world champion. I mean. I'm a former champion, world champion in my own, in, you know, in my own sport. I mean, people will miss out. I can tell you that. What was your reaction when you were told that they're going to do a 145 pound division and they wanted you in the in the inaugural title fight? Were you surprised by this? Was this on your radar at all? Were you surprised? I think everybody was surprised. I mean, I wasn't surprised necessarily. I was surprised that Cyborg wasn't involved, to be honest. Uh, well, Cyborg was involved, as you all, as we all know. They asked her, but do you to her reasons, and I don't know the exact reasons she has, you know, and it's not up to me to judge about it either way, but she was involved, but... Well, I mean, I was surprised that they would go ahead and make a title fight in her weight class when she's considered, you know, the best right now because she's the most active fighter, not just wait for her a month or yeah. so. It ended up working out because she's currently dealing with this issue, so mm -hmm. it was kind of a blessing, but a lot of people, including myself, were surprised that they would not just wait a month or so initially. I understand, I completely understand, but at the same time, if, if, if somebody calls you, or anybody in the world, and they ask you, do you want to fight for a UFC belt, oh, yeah. and, and it's 10 weeks out, and we're talking 10 weeks out, that's a lot of time, and, and you are the number one, pound for pound, best female fighter in the world. If you ask me, I didn't think any second longer, my answer was yes right away. If you get the opportunity to fight on the biggest stage in the world, in Brooklyn, headlining a UFC event, you know, fighting for the featherweight title, and you have 10 weeks to prepare, I didn't have 10 weeks to prepare, but if you have 10 weeks to prepare and you say no, I, I understand, you know, she had medical issues or, or, or whatever, I, I really don't know, you know, but I'm sorry, I'm not going to say no. And I, I believe nobody would have said no. Given the fact that she turned it down and then what happened with USADA, do you feel like there was something strange going on there? Does it make sense to you now why she turned it down? Uh, it's not up to me to judge about that, you know. Uh, it's not up to me to give a statement about that. It, it's Cyborg who, uh, or Chris, you know. She has to make a statement about it. She has to face USADA. She has to face her fans and, and whatever it is, she probably has a good reason for it or, or you know, a good explanation. If, you, if, if that question needs to be answered, it's not up to me. I think she's the only one that can answer that question best. How do you feel about Holly right now after losing two in a row? She's never lost two in a row in her entire professional career as a boxer, MMA fighter. Do you feel like there are holes in her game? Do you feel like she's kind of, you know, she peaked with the Ronda fight and now she's on, on her way down? I believe I will face the best Holly home Saturday. I believe that. And it's the same thing with, with a lot of people saying Ronda is done or should be done after two losses, you know. <clears throat> I'm sorry. There are more fighters in this business that lose fights. This is MMA. We fight with four-ounce gloves. If you get hit in the face, it hurts. 
You know, you cannot take a punch with these gloves. You know, it's not up to us to decide when somebody's done or when somebody peaked and somebody's dropping. Maybe people said that I was dropping and I wasn't good after Amanda Nunes beat me. But here I am, I'm headlining a UFC event right now. I mean, it's not up to us. It's up to a fighter, a fighter knows itself. I believe fully hearted, I will face the best Holly Holm Saturday. I'm just curious, what do you think about the state of the featherweight division? I mean, the fact that the UFC hasn't signed any other featherweights. Even Dana White a couple of weeks ago said, you know, I'm not really quite sure what to make of it right now. There's no cyborg. Do you feel like they're fully invested in this division? Do you feel like you, you, know, you win the belt on Saturday that you will then go on and defend it time after time? Or are you a little bit in the dark like we are as well? Um, to be honest, I really haven't thought about it. Okay. You know, honestly, I really sure. haven't thought about it because I know I have still a big task ahead of me in Holly home, you know. And what happens after Holly happens after Holly. Either one of us can drop back to 135, so that's not a problem, you know. And, and I think there's still also a lot of competition. But a division has to start somewhere. When uh, Ronda fought Liz Carmouche for the belt, you know, there were only four girls signed, you know, in that way division. But there are still a lot of girls, I believe, also 135 that don't want to cut that much anymore and could go back up to 145. So I believe we have some girls that can make 145. And, but for now, to be honest, my focus is on Saturday. Put up a great performance and don't look ahead of that, you know. I mean, we still have to fight. And after that fight, we will see what's happening. Okay, and one last for me. Um, I'm thinking off the top of my head here, but I do believe if you become the champion on Saturday, you're the first Dutch champion since Bas Rudin. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So you beat Alistair Overeem, you beat all those people. Yeah. What would that mean for you? <laughs> uh, it will solidify my career. It's, it's a personal thing. It will solidify my career. And not only that, I put that small country and that, that, that kickboxer. When I came into MMA, oh, that, oh she's just a kickboxer. You know, coming from that small country that only has kickboxers, I will put all those doubts away. But do you I, need the belt to solidify your career? You've done so much yeah. even before this. I don't need that. You know, I will be writing history with fighting uh, this Saturday anyway. But it's nice to win the belt, sure. you know, but the belt is not my focus. Putting up the best performance and getting a W, that's what I want. I've never touched the belt. I've never seen it. And... If I see it, if I touch it, it would be around my waist. That would be nice.